Ever wondered if fasting is a friend or foe for your blood sugar? This is the question that rattles many minds, especially those who've heard about the buzzword of the decade, intermittent fasting. But what exactly is this fancy term? Well, let's strip it down to the basics. Intermittent fasting, or IF, as it's fondly known, is an eating pattern where you cycle between periods of eating and fasting. It's not about what foods to eat, but more about when you should eat them. Intriguing, isn't it? Now let's add another player to this game. Blood sugar. It's that sweet little thing coursing through your veins, giving your cells the energy they need to perform their daily ballet. It's like the fuel for your body's engine, and insulin produced by your pancreas is the maestro conducting this sugar symphony, but here's the catch. Too much of this sweetness can be a risk factor for type 2 diabetes. It's like having too much fuel, your engine can't handle it and it starts to break down, so what's the connection between this and if? Well, some suggest that if could be a potential ally in managing blood sugar levels. The theory is that during fasting periods, your body, being the efficient machine it is, depletes its glycogen stores, which is just a fancy name for stored glucose. With no more glycogen left to burn, it switches to burning fat for energy, which can lead to increased insulin sensitivity. That means your body could potentially use insulin more effectively to regulate blood sugar. But as with any good story, there's a twist. The plot thickens as we delve into the world of scientific research. Some studies show positive effects of IF on blood sugar control, while others call for more long-term research. It's like a thriller movie. You never know what's coming next. So let's dig deeper into the science behind intermittent fasting and blood sugar. Buckle up because it's going to be a ride full of surprises. Before we dive into fasting, let's understand our main player here, blood sugar. When we talk about blood sugar, we're referring to glucose, the primary source of energy for your body's cells. Think of it as high-octane fuel, keeping everything running smoothly from your brain right down to your toes. Now, how does this glucose get into your cells, you ask? Well, that's where the hormone insulin comes into play, produced by your pancreas. Insulin is like the key that unlocks your cells, allowing glucose to enter and be used for energy. But here's the catch. Too much of a good can be a problem. High levels of blood sugar or hyperglycemia can be a risk factor for type 2 diabetes. It's a bit like a party that's gotten out of hand. Too many guests or glucose molecules can lead to chaos in your body. So what happens when blood sugar levels rise? Your pancreas releases more insulin to help get that glucose into your cells. But if your body becomes resistant to insulin's effects, or if your pancreas can't produce enough insulin, glucose can build up in your blood. Now this doesn't mean you need to start panicking every time you enjoy a sweet treat. Your body is designed to handle the occasional sugar rush. However, consistently high blood sugar levels can lead to long-term health issues including heart disease and nerve damage. So, balance is key. Your body works best when your blood sugar levels are kept within a certain range. It's a bit like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Not too high, not too low, but just right. Now that we've got the basics down, let's see how fasting enters the picture. We'll explore how the practice of intermittent fasting can impact your blood sugar levels, potentially making it easier for your body to maintain that all-important balance. So stay tuned, and let's uncover the mysteries of fasting together. And remember, if you're finding this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more health insights. When you're fasting, your body isn't just sitting idle. It's busy making a metabolic shift. Now what does that mean? Well, let's dive in and see. During fasting periods, your body does a bit of housekeeping. It's like your body's version of spring cleaning, but instead of dust bunnies and old magazines, it's tackling those glycogen stores. Glycogen, if you're not familiar, is basically stored glucose. It's like your body's rainy day fund of energy. Now, when you're fasting, your body starts to deplete these glycogen stores. It's like it's dipping into that rainy day fund. But instead of buying a fancy new gadget, it's using that energy to keep your body running smoothly. But here's where it gets exciting. After your glycogen stores are depleted, your body switches gears. It starts burning fat for energy instead. Imagine it like this. You've spent all your cash, and now you're digging into your gold reserves. That's essentially what your body is doing. It's mining for gold or in this case, fat for energy. Now you may be wondering, what does this have to do with blood sugar? Good question. This metabolic shift can lead to increased insulin sensitivity. In simpler terms, it's like your body is learning to use insulin more effectively to regulate blood sugar. It's like your body is leveling up its insulin game. 
This could potentially improve blood sugar control. It's like giving your body a tune-up so it can better handle the highs and lows of blood sugar. Not to mention this metabolic shift could also help reduce blood sugar spikes after meals. That's like having a smoother, less bumpy ride on the blood sugar roller coaster. So, fasting is not just about skipping meals. It's about giving your body a chance to reset, to make that metabolic shift, and potentially better handle blood sugar. It's about helping your body become more efficient, like upgrading from a gas-guzzling old car to a sleek, energy-efficient hybrid. Interesting, isn't it? But what does the research say about all this? Let's find out in the next scene. Science has been busy trying to answer our question, and the results are quite fascinating. Let's dive into the findings, shall we? Most of the studies on intermittent fasting and blood sugar control show promising results. One study found that individuals with prediabetes, who adopted an intermittent fasting regimen, showed significant improvement in their blood sugar levels. Similarly, another study involving people with type 2 diabetes found that intermittent fasting helped them manage their blood sugar more effectively. Now you might be thinking, great, I'm going to start fasting tomorrow, but hold your horses. While these studies are encouraging, they are mostly short term. We need more long term studies to fully understand the impact of intermittent fasting on blood sugar levels. Moreover, the effects of intermittent fasting can vary greatly from one individual to another. Factors such as your health status, the length of your fasting window and your overall diet can all influence how your body responds to intermittent fasting. For instance, if you're gorging on sugary treats during your eating window, well, that's not going to do your blood sugar any favors now, is it? And let's not forget that while some studies show positive results, others have found no significant impact of intermittent fasting on blood sugar levels. So the jury is still very much out on this one. In summary, while there's evidence that intermittent fasting can have a positive impact on blood sugar control, it's not a magic bullet. It's not a guaranteed solution for everyone, and it's certainly not a substitute for a balanced diet and regular exercise. So if might be beneficial for some, but there are some things you need to consider first, and we'll get to those in just a moment. So stick around, because you won't want to miss what's coming up next. Before you jump on the fasting bandwagon, there are a few important things to consider. First and foremost, don't go it alone. Consult with a healthcare professional or a registered dietitian before you embark on your intermittent fasting journey. This is especially crucial if you have pre-existing health conditions like diabetes or hypoglycemia. Also, keep in mind that certain medications may need adjustments while you're fasting. You don't want to end up on a roller coaster ride of blood sugar highs and lows. Let's not forget about hydration. Even though you're fasting, your body still needs water to function properly. So don't skimp on the H2O. Finally, remember there are different intermittent fasting protocols out there. You've got the 16-8, the 5-2, and more. Choose one that suits your lifestyle and you'll be more likely to stick with it. Remember, if is not a one-size-fits-all solution, but could it be right for you? So, can intermittent fasting be a friend to your blood sugar? Well, it depends. As we've seen, the science suggests that intermittent fasting could potentially improve blood sugar control for some people, especially those with prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. But remember, it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. Your overall health status, the fasting window you choose, and the quality of your diet all these factors can influence how intermittent fasting impacts your blood sugar. And let's not forget the importance of a healthy lifestyle for optimal blood sugar management. Regular exercise, adequate sleep, and stress management all play crucial roles too. So, if you're considering intermittent fasting, start by consulting with a healthcare professional. Then explore different fasting approaches and see which one fits best with your lifestyle and health goals. Explore, research, and find out if intermittent fasting can be a part of your blood sugar management strategy. Until next time, keep questioning. And before you go, if you found this video informative and valuable, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to our channel. Your support helps us continue to produce content that can help you live a healthier, happier life. Until next time, keep exploring.